So in this video, I want to give you some simple compositional changes that will transform your photography. Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. So I've spent today just going through some old photos. Um, I'm talking 2013 and back, all the way to 2003 from when I was in Iceland for the first time. And it's so interesting looking at these photos and just trying to see what I could have done better. I feel like I've really improved as a photographer when I look back at some of these photos, there's some absolute shockers in there. Um, so what I thought I'd do is talk about some simple compositional changes I could have made to make these photos better. So things that I could have done probably when I was in the field to try and do something a little bit differently. So there's some from Iceland, some from various other places around the UK as well. Okay, we'll jump straight into it. And the first one is all about um, things blending into the background. Um, if you do the woodland photography a lot, you'll find that this is really difficult and obviously fog helps and light helps and all that sort of thing. But this is my first image here, which is a shot. I just don't know what I was thinking with this image. This was taken in 2011, and I was shooting just into a valley, but there's no, there's no subject, is there? Everything blends into one, and all the interesting stuff's right at the bottom of the frame as well. The, the negative space in this just doesn't work, I don't think, it doesn't let anything breathe. Most of the trees at the bottom are just blending into one. Probably what I should have done is try and get closer to that lone tree and then isolate that lone tree like this shot that I've done of the same area there where it just makes it stand out more. You know, it's more purposeful. Again, you know, this was a woodland shot, some bluebells that I was trying to shoot and it's a reasonably nice shot this, I suppose, in, in, in that it's got a little bit of a nice atmosphere. But again, everything blends together, nothing stands out. I've not tried to pick out a particular tree in it and that means that everything's just blending together a little bit. You know, it'd look better if it was like this, where it's really obvious where the trees, you know, line up and everything, there's a path, there's a real... Uh, I think the biggest thing to say here is that there's no sense of purpose to a lot of my images. It just looked like there was a nice scene and I took it. And I think that gets me onto the next point, which is just removing things rather than adding them in. As photographers, we're quite keen to see this big vista and you think, oh my word, this is so amazing. I wanna take all this, you know. Um, we quite often like using wide angle lenses, which means that you've got more in the frame. It makes it actually more difficult to compose. And it's so simple and I did this so much just i've got so many photos from you know a, a long time ago where i've just taken the whole scene now this is a reasonably nice shot i've tr obviously tried to think about this i've tried to get the heather in but really it's neither a shot of the heather or of the scene in the background what i should have tried to do here is probably focus on that little sort of brook going down or get a lower and focus more on the heather and focus on the texture of the heather and neither doing one thing or the other here so I've added in the heather and I've added in the valley where I should have just done one or the other, I think. Um, and again, on this shot here, it's a beautiful light. There's these trees in the background. There's so many things going on in this shot, but there's just too many things. I could have cropped this or I could have walked around differently and, and, and shot this differently. So I could have cropped it from the top down and got rid of the sun and the trees and just added more of this foreground with this fence and the shadows or I could have chopped off the left-hand side of it, where the sun is, and just had a more of a square image. But probably what I should have done is move down towards the fence and shoot down the length of the fence and then have a nice leading line into the bottom. The problem is I've seen the sun, I've seen these trees, this group of trees, I've seen the fence and I've seen the snow and I tried to include all of them into one shot, which just didn't work. Whereas if you look at like this shot, which I took um, when I was in Tahoe, so probably about five or six years ago, you know, this is just more minimalist. It's it's just a simpler, easier on the eye shot. There's not too much going on. And usually, 90% of the time, the simpler you can make a photo, if you look at the photos that you like best, they tend to be simpler rather than more complex. More complex just means more difficult to compose. This is another example. So this was taken in Iceland, which is, that light in the background is just phenomenal, isn't it? It's just so good, that light in the background. For some unknown reason, I included the fence and a little bit of flower at the bottom. But what that does, and, and, and this gets onto my next point, as well as including everything, it means that positionally, I've not been very clever here. So if I want to include those flowers and the fence and that light in the background, which is a really complicated composition, it's really difficult to do. The best thing to do really is just zoom in on the background. 
But if I wanted to do that, then I need to get lower. And the reason I need to get lower is because at the moment I've got a big dead space in the middle, which isn't really doing anything. So I've got like the fence and the flowers at the bottom. I've got this amazing light at the top, and then there's nothing connecting the two things together. So I either got to go, go lower and remove that dead space, but I still don't think that'll work very well. Um, so really my best option on this is just zoom in on that back. Now I could crop it, but unfortunately when I took this in 2003, it was a six megapixel camera. This is another good example. So this is a seascape that I took in 2011 down in Cornwall. I was experimenting with long exposure. The, the, the light is really nice here, isn't it? Some beautiful light. But the problem here is that the rocks are not purposefully thought out. I've just thought, I want to get the foreground because I like the rocks and I want to get the background and the sunset. And I think I've really struggled with that for quite a lot of years. And, and what you've got to try and do on, on a shot like this is you've got to try and find a nice collection of rocks, something that's going to look good and probably get a little bit lower so you can look at the textures more. So the, if you look at this scene here, there's one rock that's this gray rock amongst these sort of pinkish rocks. I think if I'd have gone down to that and just focused on that, I'd have had a similar type of rocks around me. I'd gone a little bit lower and gone vertically. I think that would have been a much better shot. But these rocks on the left-hand side are quite distracting, there's different shapes. So yeah, just move in a little bit, which is this third tip really, move in just a little bit, small distances can make such a big change to your photography. If you're liking this, give it a thumbs up and also make sure you stay to the end because I'm gonna give you my best tip and I'm also <laughs> gonna show you me um, not doing that very well, a photograph of me from 2003 with my old gear, my old tripod and some dodgy clothes as well. So stick around for that. Um, on to the next sort of problem and that's space to breathe. I did this so much when I was looking back at my photos where I just seem to crop off things in the most random place. So this is a good example. Um, this is actually a pano, but I've not left myself enough sky space. I thought I thought I might be able to crop this out, but when I, when I went into this and tried to crop it, it just wouldn't let me um, crop, it, crop it out. So yeah, so I think that it's important to leave space to breathe where that's required. So it might be, the right amount of sky, it might be at the size, just the, the right amount of space. So this is another example here. So this is this old hut at the bottom. And you can see that I just haven't left enough space for it to breathe. Everything's just crowded over the left-hand side of this image. If it had just left a little bit more space on the left-hand side, now I might need to move a little bit to do that, or even just get rid of the old barn or go closer to the barn or something but I feel like I just rushed in this photo and I know where this is and it's just a lazy photo where you just park at the side of the road, you get out and now I think I'd have been a lot more willing to explore into the fields if I could do that and just really explore where I am positionally which I think is really important for things like this. So just don't, you know, just give things room for breathe. Another example is this one, this seascape, the, the sea is just going into this really tight space so there's no room to breathe. I need to move my camera further to the right and have more beach and and that would also position the sun in, in a nicer position as well. And then there's this shot here, which I've given a lot of room to breathe having over the sky on this shot. Um, now there's a lot of dust spots on my um, sensor here. This was a game from 2003 in Iceland. I don't know what I was thinking with this. There's not a lot to say about it. It's just absolutely useless, isn't it? But I think I was trying to do some negative space. Um, <laughs> it's so embarrassing seeing this. But negative space is good if you do it like this, where I did in, in the Pharaohs, where you've got some space above where there's a lot of room to breathe. It you've got this dramatic cloud. It just looks a lot better. Or even this shot here in the Pharaohs as well, where I'm trying to create this this feeling of drama. So there's like these cliffs on the side and then there's this massive open ocean and then I've got a bird flying through. It gives this real sense of vastness to the, to the landscape. So yeah, giving space, areas to breathe is really important. This is a good example more recently where I've got these trees and then the gaps at the side are nice, the gaps at the top are nice. It just feels like, it's just a comfortable image to look at and I think that's, really, really important. Now, I talk about space to breathe and giving um, negative space and all that in my new ebook on composition, which is nearly ready. It's so close. I've got, it's about 150 pages now. Um, 
I will release it. I've been doing it for over a year now, um, but it's it's super close, super close. Going to um, Harris for a month, <laughs> delayed that slightly. So the next one that I did seem to have done a lot was just put boring foregrounds in my photos. <laughs> I seem to do this all the time when I was in Iceland. So this is a good example. I've got this nice river um, and I've got this just grass in the foreground, which is just a bit useless really, isn't it? Now what I'd have done on this is just go down to the river, I think, and just try and include some nice foreground from the river or just zoom in closer into the river and where the bridge is, I think would have been a nicer shot. But the bottom half of this photo is just doing nothing to add to the photo. Again, even when the, the, the foreground's nice, this is another shot taken at the same time as that very first shot I showed you. I don't feel like this foreground adds to the shot. There's quite a lot going on at the top and the foreground's almost too empty. If I'd have gone round to the left and tried to use that shadow to lead in, I think that would have worked. But the foreground at the moment is just a bit meh. Here's a few more foregrounds that just don't work and I feel like if you do something more purposeful like this, then that makes such a big difference. Right, onto my final point, and this is all about just edges and just you know having light or dark things on your edges. Again, I seem to do this a lot. This was in Maui, I think, in oh, Hawaii, where I took this shot. This is more recently, actually. I found this shot and I thought, well, that's useless. When did I take this? 2016, so yeah, so about seven years ago, I took this shot and there's a lot of dead space on the bottom right and there's this really bright spot. And then I don't think the sky at the top particularly works either and it's a weird color. Everything's wrong about this photo. I feel like on this photo, I need to move to the left, get more of that light in, or crop that out completely. Because I just feel like it's distracting, and you don't want distracting elements in, in your images. Again, this was a shot in Yosemite I took in 2008, I think this was. Probably the long, wrong time of day to take this shot. I remember taking this and thinking it was a good shot, and I don't know why I thought that. There's definitely some nice color tones in there, the yellows and the grays work well together, but I need to have some you know, really purposeful foreground because at the moment it's just distracting it's at the edges it doesn't it doesn't look like I've done it on purpose but if I went down low and found a nice set of leaves and really thought about those set of leaves then that could have been a really nice foreground in this shot or just gone round to those rocks and trying to find some leaves on those rocks but at the moment it's just a bit of a lot of distractions and there's nothing for your eye to focus on, which I think is really important. Again, I did it the same here in Iceland. This was again 2003 of this glacier coming down. I bet that glacier has changed so much in the last 20 years. It'd be interesting to see some photos now of it. But you can see there's two distractions here. There's one which is the shadow on the right hand side and then the bright patch of the glacier in the background on the left hand side. I feel like if I just rotated my camera to the left, there might be a reason I couldn't do that, but I don't think there is. I think that would have been good because I'd have got rid of that dark area on the right hand side. And sometimes just rotating your camera, moving your camera up or down, moving yourself up or down or left or right, is the difference between an amazing composition or something that just doesn't quite work. So it's worth trying. Um, okay, so I, I told you at the end of the video, I'd show you a picture of me with my, with my gear. Um, before I do that, I just wanna say thank you to this week's sponsor and that is Sol Digital. And Sol Digital um, are amazing at making books um, for your photography. And creating a book for your photography is the best thing you can do um, to share it with other people and to have those memories yourself. Seeing something in print is absolutely fantastic. And they can do small books like this one I did of the Faroe Islands, which is on a, a sort of textured paper, which looks absolutely fantastic. Um, slightly bigger ones like this, um, with amazing covers as well. This was Cat Bells, this was just a triple Cat Bells, just one trip that I did and I made it a book of, which looks really, really nice. Or you can have something a little bit more spectacular, like this one I did um, of my 2022 photos. So this is all my best 2022 photos. And if you remember, I gave one of these away um, in one of my videos, but this, I'm so pleased with this. This is just so fantastic to look at and it's a memory that I'll have forever. And it just means that if you have friends coming around, you don't want to show them all the digital files, you can just get this out. And it's just really nice to be able to do. I definitely recommend them. I've done so many books with them now. They're a fantastic company for printing your books worldwide. Okay, onto this photo of me. And um, also I wanted to show you um, Gulfos. This was Gulfos 
Uh, a photo of Gulfos, which is a bit of a record shot, isn't it? Uh, it's not amazing, but it's a different now, isn't it? Because now there's some platforms there. Um, when I went, there's one, two, three, four people. This was the middle of the day in the summer um, in Iceland. Now there's probably about 40 coaches there. So uh, it's changed quite a lot. All landscapes have changed quite a lot. People are traveling a lot more and seeing these beautiful areas, which I think is fantastic. As long as we look after these areas, the more that can see them, the better, I think. You know, why shouldn't people be able to go and see these areas? Um, but we just got to look after them. Um, okay, onto this photo. So this is me with a tripod, which I don't know what it was, that tripod. I think it was a Manfrotto. It was aluminium. I remember catching my fingers in it when I shut it all the time. And um, yeah, good photography pose there. Got the central column up and my camera strap on. Not a good idea. But the big tip that I give anybody, and I don't think I ever used to do this, um, you see something spectacular, what's the first thing you do? Get your tripod out of the car or get your tripod down, put your camera on it, start looking and finding your composition. Just don't do that. I promise your photography this year will improve if you just don't get your camera out, don't get your tripod out, and just look around. Just spend half an hour looking, look at the textures. I did this so much when I was in Harris, and there's gonna be some videos coming out about that um, at the beginning of April. Um, and I did um, this so much when I was in Harris, and I found so many more compositions just by looking and observing. And then you can get your camera out. You've got lots of time to get your camera out. You know, really, really important to do that. It's the best tip I can give you to improve your compositions. So that's it. I'll leave you with this picture of the smallest garage on Iceland, I think. Um, I remember in, when me and Anne, my wife, went round Iceland, we went around the whole circumference, and actually half of it was um, dirt track, and it wasn't tarmac at that point. And um, we used to stop at these little garages for hot dogs. I think they're still a favourite of mine, but I'm not sure if this one, being so small, <laughs> sold hot dogs. Anyway, I hope that's helpful. Like I say, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Thanks ever so much for watching. And until next Sunday, bye.